everybody. You get to eat lunch with Daddy Cornstar today. Today I'm gonna kinda eat quickly, but I'm not a fast eater. You can ask Mama Cornstar. I'm one, I just can't shovel the food down. I know Mama Cornstar, the where she works and stuff, they don't have a lot of time between breaks, so she's gotta shovel it down like two shovels of swallow and boom, she's done. I can't do that, never have been able to. But I'm still gonna eat a little bit faster today. Sable will be here pretty soon, but I had Joshua ask me, Daddy Cornstar, do you think you will ever buy a new pickup? I don't know if I'll ever get a brand new one or not. I have never bought a brand new truck. Uh, I always love looking at people's new trucks though. Oh, But I'm sure someday down the road, you know, my red pickup I drive, that is a 1998, getting some age on it, starting to get, but it still runs good. So I wanna run it, treat it good. Run it as long as everything's running safe, but that day will be coming, I'm sure. Somebody asked, DC, how do you deal with all the stress of financial stress, everyday stress? Well, financial stress, I guess it don't matter what you do, what size of operation you run. If you're running a bakery down the street, running a gas station, working for somebody, we all have financial stress. I mean, it, it don't matter. It's a worry for us all, but I do. I go to bed at night and I'm like, I can't stress on all that all the time. It would eat us up alive. It would absolutely eat us up alive. So you do, you gotta try really hard, just kind of put it back behind you and just keep trying really hard. And you know, if you're in that spot where bills are, if there's bills that you can get rid of, meaning like, oh, newspapers or something that you don't read, but it's costing you $20 a month or something. You start getting rid of some of the uh, sideline bills that you don't need before you know it. Hey, there's 150, $200 out of your budget that you don't have to be spending. So, but no, nope, I'm just as like you guys. I got that stress too. But the way I've looked at it, I go to bed at night and I know I'm trying hard. The man up above is looking down on us. He's the one that takes care of us. I don't try to out guess him. So that's kind of how I do it. Oh man, I need a, I got blue jeans on. I can use that for my rag and then tonight throw them in the washer. All right, all right, Echo, you asked. DC, did you guys sell all your crop, new crop beans or are you waiting for higher prices? Uh, on our old crop beans, we got them all sold already. We sold them too quick, but at the time we had to look, we were looking that didn't look like no carry in the bean market. We were afraid if we held on the beans, whoo, it would go down. We sold too quick on them, but on new crop beans, meaning 21 beans, we do a lot of our beans on the board of trade. So we've been still kind of working on that hoping for some higher prices yet, but uh, marketing, I would say for me is one of the hardest things and we'll be talking more about this too. We actually have a marketing outfit that we work through. Ever Ag, they're called Ever Ag. And you've seen some of the girls that's been out here working with us, super, super, super great people. Actually, we pay them, <laughs> if you wanna say, they worry about our markets for us, but we're in contact almost every day. So, Everag is the name of it, and we will be having them out pretty soon and stuff, and we'll be doing more talking with them, and then showing you guys too. Uh, super great outfit to work with. I think we've made some really good moves since we've been working with them. Lisa said when her little son was young, she was cutting his air and she actually cut a part of his ear off. Well, one thing, Lisa, once you cut your son's ear off, cut them enough times, there won't be no more ear there to cut. You don't have to worry about it no more. Hey there, Gary, on your question you asked, do any farmers use their own cash flow to use on their farm instead of going through the bank and borrowing money. Yes, there is. 
and there's actually probably more out there than we realize. And the great news is, I wish I was one of them. I wish I was one of them. Oh, that'd be so nice. But we do have a great bank to work with. We do borrow money for our operation. I know, well, there's no lie about that. But there is guys out there that do, can carry their own operations and stuff with their own cash flow. And there are some farmers that probably still borrow money and could carry their self, but they got their money put different places so it's easier for them to borrow some money. I can't speak for every farmer around how they do their operations because I honestly don't know every guy's different, but I do know some guys around that do fund their own self and everything. So, you know, I guess for me, I look at it this way, just keep working and try to get that debt down and stuff so you're not having to borrow as much money. But yeah, I know there were some years there that it, it kicked us hard. It took a lot of money out of our pockets and that's when you hope you got some money in reserve. But when you got to reach in and take that, uh, it can be a struggle. So, but, so I hope that answers your question, Gary. Matthew, Matthew. So you worked on a combine all summer, getting it ready for fall time. And then I take it, it caught on fire, but you were quick to grab the hose off the fire truck and help put it out. I know, it's hard. We've had a couple combines burn up too. And, ah oh man, people, I mean, they rushed out there and they jumped around trying to get it out. And I hate to say it, but normally about the time the fire trucks get there, there is so much damage, it just, it kind of becomes, if I would have waited two more minutes, they would have called it a total loss. Now I'm repairing half of this burnt combine. But no, we've had some burn up too. And you do, you run to the phone and you gotta call the fire department. But it is amazing how fast this equipment burns up. It burns fast. And I feel bad for you, cause I know you put all that work and time in it, getting ready for harvest and Two minutes, it's gone. But hopefully, Russell, nobody was hurt. I'm sorry, that was Matthew, not Russell, Matthew. Morgan asked, Daddy Cornstar, what piece of equipment would you want next? Oh boy, that's a good question. I'm hoping, I'm hoping for a while we don't have to worry about any equipment, but someday down the road, it will probably be our big sprayer, probably be looking for a newer Hagee sprayer, and we'd kind of like to go with an STS 16, meaning it holds 1600 gallons, but hopefully that's a long ways down the road. Uh, I know, you walk around sometimes on the farm, there's so many different pieces of equipment that need to be replaced. So to answer your question, Morgan, it'd probably be the sprayer down the road. And I know, hopefully, everything else will be in really good shape for a while. All right, all right. We've been getting uh, a lot of comments lately about Sack, our cat, the gray one. A lot of people have been saying, hey, you guys haven't been saying anything about it. You know, we miss seeing Sack around. But uh, it's not... We haven't seen Sack for probably three weeks or so now, but Sack is the neighborhood traveling cat, and he actually lives a mile away from us, so he goes up there to see his mom, dad, brother, and sisters, hangs out there for a few days, and then he stops at two other neighbors along the way as he's cat prowling around, and then he comes back down here. So when we're privileged, he's here, he's here, but, to be honest about it right now, the other neighbors haven't seen him either, but he's a big tomcat. Them things can go all over. We don't never try to, any of the neighborhood cats that kind of come from farm to farm, we never try to put them in a cage or anything like that and force them to stay here. I've talked to him a few times, says, hey, you stay around when it's cold, where it's warm, you stay here, but no, they kind of go where they want so to be with a question, I guess. We haven't seen Sack around for about three weeks now. 
And then sometimes when you think, you know, maybe they decided to go down the road another two miles, all at once they show back up. 